Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to Project Irrationality Part 9. I really did not expect that this would take this long, 9 parts. This is much longer than I expected. But the thing is we had a lot of trouble with those glass tubes and I think I now finally solved and know how to do this. Um, as I said before in the previous video we mainly had the issue that if we cut those tubes and then we used uh, the torch to chamfer the edges then they would always break if I push them inside the EK tube and a lot of people left feedback down below so really appreciating your comments thank you very much a lot of people said that it's mainly because you will get some kind of tension inside the glass which is certainly happening and certainly also not good for the glass tubes but the main reason why they were cracking is that the torching on the edge will cause the tube to have a slightly increased diameter on this position and if we push it inside of the EK fitting they will break. Because I tested this with some alpha cool tubes right out of the box so I did not touch them, they were not cut, they were also not torched by me but if I push them inside the EK fittings some of them broke because the diameter on exactly this position was slightly increased. The solution is pretty simple. We still cut them exactly the same way, use our DIY glass cutter, cut around the tube, not entirely, maybe like 270 to 300 degrees, use a little bit of oil, break them into two pieces and then use wet sanding paper to chamfer the edges and so far it looks really, really promising. The plan for today is to finish this build completely means that we will have to finish the last tubes, the last four tubes, um, two in total for the GPU, two in total for the main board. We will also have to work a little bit on the cable management and then I will also show you how I managed this tube on the back. Oh yeah, and we also have to still make the connection between the radiators and go back into the tube. So this will certainly take some time. Here you can see exactly what I meant. This tube came like this from Alpha Cool. I didn't touch it at all. And you can see that, yeah, directly on this part and right here, it's a slightly increased diameter. And if we try to push this into the EK fitting, you can already feel that it just touches the tube inside, but it, there's no way that we can push it inside um, the tube really. So it makes contact with the O-ring inside there. And that's really what causes our issue. And I think our cutting quality is quite nice so far. That's how it looks like with the DIY glass cutter. And the only thing we have to do is chamfer now. Just using a little bit of wet sanding paper and now chamfering the edge. Two to three minutes later, that's the result of our chamfering. I think it looks quite nice. And now we will only need a little bit of water to wet this part of the tube to make sure it's easier to push it inside the fitting. And this type of chamfering should also be sufficient so we don't damage the o-ring inside there. The GPU part should be quite easy I think because you can just lift up the GPU, insert the tubes into those two fittings and then slide everything down together. So make sure that the GPU is sliding into the slot and also the tubes inside those two fittings. I think the CPU part will be much more difficult. I also didn't tighten the fittings yet, it's just sitting there loose so we still can move the tube a little bit to be a little bit more flexible.
I'm also a little bit concerned when it comes about this riser cable. You can see it makes this S shape behind the GPU. I really had to bend it quite a bit and riser cables really don't like if you bend them. It happens quite often that they crack somewhere and then you don't get a display signal. I hope this one's arrived because I really had to mount and unmount the GPU quite often. Let's see if this one's arrived. With glass tubes there's really no room for mistakes. I measured this one. You can see it aligns almost perfectly, but about 2 mm in height are missing. With the normal acrylic tube, if we just bend it slightly upwards and push it inside, it would be fine, but with a glass tube, no chance. If you push this by 2 mm, it will simply snap. Finally, all the main tubes are inside the system. I just managed to fit in the last two tubes into the CPU. The key was to unmount the distro plate from the bottom because the distro plate is mounted with two screws to the case itself. But I removed those screws from here and here, removed the distro plate a little bit to the back and then I could fit in the tubes into the CPU. The loop is almost complete. The only thing missing is the connection between two radiators on the top and the last connection with one radiator back to the reservoir. The connection up here is also a little bit of a challenge. We make the connection to the first radiator in the back with the tube and then we have to connect the back radiator and the front radiator over do those two connections and then eventually connect this one with the reservoir. I decided to build a small radiator connection bridge using two 90 degree angled rotary fittings from EK on the left and on the right rotary on the bottom right here which is necessary to make the connection to the radiator and also a rotary fitting right here so we can rotate this part as well and two 20 millimeter extensions from EK and this is perfectly for the size to make the connection between the two radiators. I almost can't believe it, but we're done with the loop. All the tubes are in place. The only thing that's missing is a little bit of cable management on the back. We'll just show you the result in a second and then we can proceed filling the loop. Also done with the cable management. Now it's not completely perfect, but I think it should be fine. Considering the amount of components we have, especially with the RGB fans and all those cables we have, I think it's, it's going to be okay. Considering that I also won't see the backside on a daily basis, I think it's fine. On the bottom we have the SSDs. Top left you see the connection for the tubes that come from the front to the back. And there we also have a temperature sensor located. Water cooling is ready, loop is completely closed, system is pretty much ready to go and we can fill it with our liquid. The liquid was really a difficult decision for many many weeks. I was not sure what kind of liquid I'm going to use. I was struggling between some EK solid fluid and also the alpha cool fluid which is UA active. It's a see-through clear fluid from alpha cool and if you then use some UV light it 
really shines up and uh, really looks quite beautiful but considering that the system will um, be on a table next to me I was not sure if this will be kind of annoying after a certain while that's why I went for the EK solid fuel again the same stuff we used in my previous system where we had some kind of issues with this fluid but we were also mixing it with some excess PC concentrate not sure if this was maybe the issue this time we will just use this fluid nothing else but we will also dissolve it a little bit if you look at this tube on the right this is using just the pure fluid right here and on the left side it's three times dissolved. The reason for this is if you have some lights shining from the back I think it looks much better if it's a little bit see-through instead of just having the real um, solid look. All right time to fill the loop. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, what the fuck is going on here? When you think that finally everything is going fine, it's clearly not. Can you see that there is some water behind there? It's sitting between the two plates of the distro plate, so basically between the bottom part and the top part, and I'm not sure where it comes from. Also here we have some water coming from the distro plate, I just hope this thing is not leaking. And looking inside here, Seems we have the same problem. There's just some water inside there. Just have to locate where this is coming from for the moment. Fortunately, I decided to have a drain port right here. So we can at least get the fluid back out of the system. Here we have the distro plate on my table after about one and a half hours. It took me to take everything out of the system. You can see the water that's trapped inside. We have a connection right here and a connection right here where the o-ring is glued together, I assume. On this area right here on the right, I don't see any water next to the outer part of the o-ring, but right here we have some water and down here. So it could be either this part or this part, maybe both. Not entirely sure. The thing is, I'm really not a person that gets frustrated easily. It really takes quite a lot to wind me up or frustrate me. I have a lot of patience uh, to work on things. But I also have my limits and considering how many issues I had with this system so far with all the glass tubes and stuff and now everything was pretty much ready and the distro plate is leaking is extremely frustrating and also extremely annoying. For me right now it's Saturday about 7.30 p.m. I started working on this today at about 1 p.m. so I just spent about six hours on this and the result is that first it looked really nice. I was really happy and thought okay we can finally work on this thing. I was assuming that I could do some overclocking tomorrow and test everything if it's working. And now everything is back in pieces. I will have to completely disassemble the distro plate, check which part is actually leaking, which o-ring is the problem. The thing with those o-rings is also that you cannot just cut them and glue them back together because they have to be exactly the perfect length, the perfect size, which makes it a little bit more tricky. I have... I, I think I have some of those o-rings lying around at Case King because I used them for those Aqua Xhalare 3M Novak builds like one year ago. I know how to do this but just adds a lot of more time to it. Easily one more week until I will have time to fix this thing. But I will promise you that next, next video everything will be up and running. Thanks for joining in. Sorry that I was not able to finish the system in this video but yeah see you next time